Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Lord, bless this time together. Open our hearts and our minds, what you have for us today, Lord. I just I feel like I'm kicking against the bricks today, Lord, but I know it's, it's not your bricks that are in my way. It's the enemy's bricks. Well, you've placed your word above yourself. You've placed part of your word paramount in our lives. Lord, uh, help us open, open the scriptures for us today and show us what you have for us. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was at, uh, I had to go to Tread City and get tires from the car yet. Good morning, Becky. Morning. Your brother's tardy this morning. That's okay. I know. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I went to Tread City yesterday and uh, I, has anyone here ever been to Trent City before? No, 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 no. Well, they have a monitor up on the wall and the TV's on. And of course, <laughs> that's good. the news, it's Spectrum News, you know, the cable news network, or it's Spectrum's personal news for this area, <laughs> national news and everything. Anyway, um, was talking, we get to talk, and they're talking to the President Biden. This is where we're getting the, we're getting the leadership we deserve. I said, Trump. Biden, whoever. And he says, What do you mean? Well, basically, start talking about the fact that Romans 1, that, that the nations turn away from God, that God will curse that nation, and it's a progression of what happened to that nation. So we get to talking about, um, um, I said, and all the signs are right that Jesus is returning soon and we'll be, we, we'll be raptured out of here. Well, that, then we're talking to a kid who went to Sunday school. Ex military has PTSD, and an old man who's in his 70s, his wife in a nursing home. And uh, he, 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 a church attender, he'd never heard of the rapture. And we got into a big discussion about babies and what happens to babies when they die. This this kid, kid he's in his 40s, said, <laughs> it's a kid to me now, um, said, that, Well, I can't, I can't, I can't take the fact that God. We send all babies to hell. God, God can't send their people to hell. I said, well, I use my burning building. I said, if you ran into a burning building and saved the child's life and brought him out, saved his life, and, and the people outside shot you, said, that's what that's what we did to Jesus. He got out son. He sent us out of the world to die for our sins, and we killed him. We, we can talk about the Romans doing it. We can talk about the Jews doing it. We did it. We, did. we were involved. Our, our, our race. The human race, Jew or Gentile, doesn't matter. We, we all did it. The Romans drove the spikes. The Jews set everything up. So, all right. So, uh, I said. That, so, there's only one way to eternal life, and that's through Jesus Christ. And I said, but again, if you're a believer in Christ, I said, and I believe this. This, this totally goes against what Mike thinks, but anyway, that's all right. But if you go by. Uh, if you're a pre, what they call a pre-millennial or pre-tribulation before, uh, they they knew about the great tribulation. They knew about the second year of the tribulation, which is really fascinating. Not really. Well, I mean, with the culture we have, so focused on that stuff. That's true. Yeah, you're I mean, right. It's hard to believe that they, you know, hear about the uh, uh, what's the book series? Book behind series. There you go. They, they, they neither one of them heard of that, well, which is interesting. But, I mean, there's so much interest in oh yeah, and, uh, and the uh, prophecy, right. end times prophecy, and you know, that, as far as salvation messages go, that really that that whole prophecy stuff should be kind of left out of it because speculation. Right, it is speculation. So, but know, again, but my 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 belief is that before this tribulation, the seven year tribulation for the heavens, that the church believers in Jesus Christ will be raptured. Yeah, and, I'm with you on that. What's that? I'm with you. I know. I, know, I, guess, <laughs> I, know. I, I realize. Yeah, I guess, I'm just no, sorry. our sorry. pastor believes as he does. Yeah, I know. So. I, I realize everybody wants to get me, me out of here before the bad stuff. I absolutely. I you bet you. Yeah, you know, that's my hope. Human nature. I need not get a band so, I'm okay. I understand. Um, so anyway, um, make a long story short. We got to talking about Jesus, about belief in Christ. You believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Christ is the only way to heaven. And my point about all this five minutes of talking is we're all out there in the world. We're all out there sh shopping for groceries, getting tires put on our car, getting defective tires put on our car in my case. But anyway, we're out there in the world. And people are hungry right now. There's, 
the Barna Group shows incredible and uh, uh, rising interest in spiritual things. I didn't say God, you know, God of Abraham, I say Jacob things, but spiritual things. It, it's growing. They're, like, they're hungry, but they're choosing to fill the buffet with what they want. That's right. So they're taking out one choice more so out of it on purpose. And the most important choice. You got to say that. So they're hungry, but they're not eating. What, Joe? Morning. Hey, it's going to pop in and say hello. I got to go on mute. I'm still at work. Okay. That's right. fine. I'll be listening. Okay. Thanks, Joe. So, and my point is this as we're out there in the world, as we're doing stuff, uh, as we're doing things day in and day out, we need to be conscious of the fact that we are, my wife says it, we're probably the only Bible some of these people will read or will listen to. And the point of my discussion with these people was it wasn't adversarial. I mean, one guy hated Trump, one guy hated Biden. And I didn't, I got, you know, you get that. That's what's going on. Right Where now. was this guy? Trent City. Oh, Trent City. Yeah, the Paris problem here, one of which is the fact that Trent's life. Anyway, um, so that's my point is we need to be cognizant of the fact that God presents us with opportunities. We're not all missionaries. We're not all going to Afghanistan. Or we're not all going to Argentina. Uh, yesterday was, by the way, the uh, anniversary of uh, Peron yeah. getting released from prison. Yeah. Yeah, we're speaking of Argentina. But anyway, we can't all do all of that. But we are where we're at. And God puts us here <clears throat> to be light and salt. And we're to speak the truth in love. Um, so my, I get just... Uh, Challenge everyone, myself included. Thank you so much, Andrew. I challenge everyone to uh, to be cognizant of that fact and be light and salt wherever you're at, and be be prepared to give a testimony for and uh, talk about why you believe what you believe. Simple. All right. Now we're getting bonus stuff. I'll just check out so much. <laughs> Well, starting uh, today in Daniel chapter <clears throat> two, starting in verse thirty-nine. Uh, we're in the yeah, we're, we're kind of in the middle of things, but good things. We'll start reading. Uh, uh, we started that we were in the middle of the kingdoms of Daniel, describing what kingdoms. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream what the statue represented. And we had that nice picture of the statue last week. <laughs> I still got mine. What's that? I still got mine. There you go. Okay. Yeah, there you yeah, go. The bookmarker. There you go. That's right. So, verse 39, uh, let's read verse 39. There's two kingdoms here. Bill, would you start, please? 39 through. Just read 39. We're going to talk about Another... kingdoms. Another kingdom inferior to you shall arise after you, and yet a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. Okay, so now we're talking about the, the kingdom, uh, and again, the, most of the commentators I've read agree that uh, verse 39, talking about the Medio Persian Empire, uh, and then the kingdom after that, the third kingdom is the bronze kingdom is greece under alexander the great and again he ruled the known world at the time astonishing general uh sad ending um and everything's put up so that's where that is now we read uh bill why don't you read verse 42 40 also sorry verse 40. <clears throat> and there shall be a fourth kingdom Strong as iron, because iron breaks to pieces and shatters all things. And like iron that crushes, it shall break and crush all, all these. Okay, so the, the, the fourth kingdom that they're talking about, when you're looking at the statue before we get to the feet, is the Roman Empire. Um, and Rome was the strongest. It was uh, administered properly. Greece, Greece didn't last long. Rome lasted uh, you can argue that Rome lasted, the, the Roman Empire lasted, if you include the Ottoman Empire, up until the 19, 1900 thereabouts. But really, the Roman Empire, maybe 400, 400 AD, was, was falling apart. But when did the Visigoths come over the hill? And, uh, you, most historians look at uh, you know, 
first century BC to like 500 years. 500. Yeah, yeah 500 to 400. Which is a long time that for is any empire. For any empire. Yeah, I mean, so. look at the, the American empire, if you will, 1776 to 2023 so far, a little over 200 years. Um, you want to start in 1980 or 20, uh, sorry, 1783 when the Constitution came into effect. Uh, we can start it from that date, if you like. But we're we're a short-lived empire, longer than Alexander, and I believe we're longer than the media media Persian Empire. They didn't last that long. But again, empires come and empires go. Um, Roman Empire is prophesied here, and now we get into the um, the pure prophecy unfulfilled at this time, in my opinion. Um, Becky, if you'd read verses 41 to 44. Just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be a divided kingdom. Yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it, even as you saw iron mixed with clay. And as the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be a mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. Mm. And then uh, read verse that was 43, read, read 44. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. Amen. Okay. Now, when you look at this, there's commentators look at this two different ways. Commentators look at that as a uh, when the church was born, this is the kingdom that's going to slay everything and it's going to rule and will admonish or throw out every other kingdom. Now we're told as Christians that we are not of this world. We are uh, we are citizens of heaven. We're not citizens of this world any longer. And and when Christ returns at the end, we will we will be victorious through Jesus. Now, my own feeling is this last prophecy is about the final kingdom that will return and will be destroyed by Christ himself when he returns. That, that's my own feeling about it. And again, you have uh, you, people talk about the toes on the feet. It's a divided kingdom. It's not very strong. Um, it's The ruling is divided amongst many. Um, but then you read about the Antichrist and He's supposed to be overall, he's supposed to be the supreme ruler of the entire world. So, um, again, there's conjecture on both ways. You could, you could see how people could think um, at, at the start of the church. Yes. That it was the Mount, the, the, the Mount. Yes. That it was going to take over the whole world because and it was divided. There's an Eastern and Western church. Yep. Um, you can see how that could be thought of as the, well, of course, now, with the you know, advantage of hindsight, we, we know that that's not the eternal kingdom, so we, we can sit here and say, well, this is talking about the end times. So Agreed. There are still pastors, there are still churches that believe that our job is to bring the kingdom in, that we're going to bring the kingdom in. We've been given the authority over over everything to christ and that we are going to bring the kingdom in i i don't see that i don't see us having the power to do something like that yeah, i mean that's still you bring a kingdom a human church i mean yeah yeah I, yeah i don't see a human church being eternal no no so i mean, I mean and, and as far as the antichrist goes you know with that confession we're reading on sunday morning mm -hmm. the westminster confession the original version uh he had language in it that directly said the Pope was the Antichrist. Right. So Calvin and, and Martin Luther both believed that. Yes, they did. Um, and they had it in print. Somehow it got deleted over the last 500 years, but it's not in there anymore. But Kind of gentler. <laughs> yeah, it's a kind of gentler in the Westminster Confession, but at the time it was written. Yeah. They oh. firmly believed the Pope was... Catholics are called Papists. I mean... Uh, 
uh, go back to um, uh, what happened to the Catholic Church in England. I mean, uh, the Catholic Church was under persecution because of all the indulgences and all things that had done. Um, people that were Catholic were looked down upon. Look what happened in Ireland. You have the Catholics versus the Protestants. I mean, still there's still some of that going on over there. But the, the Catholic Church, I'm here to tell you, there is no one that God has put in charge down here on earth that is infallible. And there's no one that can make new doctrine. The Bible tells us that our Bible, our, the, the Bible itself, is the infallible word of God. It's it's the word of God that well, we the trust. The Catholic Church doesn't believe that. Correct. That's so, exactly uh, right. Church tradition is held up as equal to Scripture in the Catholic Church. So, right. So if the Pope so that's, comes out yeah, with a decree it, something, that's... that's That supersedes whatever we had in our hands, which well, is... I don't know if it supersedes it, but at least comes up equal to it. So is it because of traditions why people are so locked into it? You know what I mean? People are, it, it, from a Catholic perspective, will not listen to anything. This is what I'm a, I'm a, a what is the word? Um, something Catholic. They say they're, they're, they're really serious about it. Roman Catholic. It's it's Roman about, Catholic. About, about, yeah, about, about, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think they get locked into what I mean. Uh, the, Catholicism is a guilt-based and, and works-based religion, right. so it's a different it's thing. Not, we, we believe we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, through the word of God. That's why when you see a devout Catholic, they have a crucifix on a cross. Uh, and probably some kind of an altar in their bank. Christ is still on the cross. Yes, so, yes, Jesus is still on the cross. You put it there. We so, have it. Yeah. Yes, we, uh, our, our cross is empty. Our cross is empty because Christ raised Christ has paid the price one time and has risen from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. He's not on the cross anymore. So anyways, uh, uh, for all you said, I don't, I don't see anybody can make an argument that the mountain, if you will, today is the church. Is the church. I agree. You could certainly a thousand years ago have easily made that. Uh, <clears throat> but now uh, the mountain's looking like a... A molehill? Yeah. <laughs> Our mountain. Not Jesus, not right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and uh, so again, the prophecy Daniel's giving here, uh, and the way I'm, I'm, I'm interpreting it, and really the majority of Protestant scholars that I've read um, agree that, that this is the end times. This is, and if you remember back when we were in Isaiah, remember when we looked at Isaiah? Isaiah would give you a prophecy for something that was happening short term, near term. And then he threw on something about end times. Well, the, the thought process was, okay, to prove that what I'm telling you is correct, here's what's going to happen. And Daniel lays out the kingdoms that are coming. Um, so it's fascinating. And so that we have the kingdoms that are coming. And then he goes, fast forward the last week, which we'll talk about later in Daniel, uh, we, we come to the last kingdom and he shows that in here too so if the first three have come to pass the first uh first kingdoms uh have come to pass four rather then I, the fifth one's going to happen too that's again a proof that god gives us that the prophecy we're hearing the prophet that's giving a prophecy is in fact knows what he's talking about he is in fact uh, telling the truth it's interesting that that god gave the dream to a pagan king uh you know the first evidence of the end times if you want to you know if that's the way to go that he gave that dream and vision to a uh, you're actually right. king so you're right but of course he didn't didn't give the ability to interpret it so i guess right well again well no um and, and it is and i'm just i'm following with my uh you see if they're there yeah, they're, they're, see, they're coming. Yeah. Hi, Joe. Okay, this is my dad. They've been assist, assigned to assist you with AAA request. Receive an update again shortly on a tracking link when the driver's on his way. So, if he's having a morning coffee, you're done. <laughs> All right. Now, let's read. Um, Al, you're next on deck. Would you read verse 45? As much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands. And that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. 
Okay, so this is just fascinating. Now, the stone is not cut by hands. It's done by God. God, it, God yeah. himself does this. Now, did God crucify Jesus? Was he the instrument that actually drove the nails into his hand? The Romans crucified Jesus. Right. He was done. Yeah, but was they, an were, instrument. <laughs> they, was, they were an instrument of God because God had said Jesus had to die to pay for our sins. So, uh, phenomenal, incredible. It was God's will that, that Isaiah tells us it was it, it pleased the Lord to crush him. And God allowed Jesus to be crucified, which goes back to my discussion yesterday that there's only one way for salvation. And if again, if you killed your own son, which God did, allowed his son to be killed as a way to atone for our sins. And that's the only way, he says, that's the only way that you can be saved. Then by golly, you better be following that way to be saved. There is no other way. There's no other gate that we can go through, you know. And the gate is narrow. There's only one way. There's all the good works that we do are filthy rags. Paul told them, talked about it. Paul said if there's anyone that could get in the, to the kingdom of God by works, then I would. I should be in, you know. I. I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I studied under Gamaliel. I did all these wonderful things. And I count all that as filthy rags. Because it's Christ that did the work, that died for our sins. And we have to trust in that uh, wonderful stone that's cut out of the mountain by God's hands. And God, God did not physically kill Jesus, but it was Jesus, God's will to, to crush him, to allow him to be killed. Be for an atonement for our sin, because there's no other sacrifice that would have been good enough to pay for our sins. All the sheep and the goats that were killed, and the, the doves, and all the other animals and grains, everything was sacrificed to God, couldn't pay for our sins. It had to be a perfect sacrifice. And Jesus was that perfect sacrifice. What have, what have you read, Scott, about the uh, uh, metals going from gold to. Uh, Brands, you know, down. I, mean, I, I get quite good questions about that one. You know, okay. I mean, I get that uh, one reason to have the top one gold is that King Nebuchadnezzar is pretty much okay with this interpretation because yeah, he's, he's the gold dog. He's the golden boy. He's the golden boy, right? Yeah. So it's like, man, okay, it's fine. I'll be, I'll be dead and the rest of the stuff happens. Okay, that's fine. As long as I'm the you know, top guy right now, kind of like Hezekiah. As you and again, most of the interpretations I've read might be the gold is a very soft metal and pliable. Silver is stronger than gold, bronze is stronger than silver, and iron is stronger than any of those metals. And again, again that's the progression to the length of iron is that they're physically stronger than the others, but they yeah. are more precious. Yeah, but you know, the Bible says that each kingdom is weaker. Right. So that's where my question comes in, because obviously what you just said is, is the opposite, right? The metals, mm -hmm. and also the you know Nebuchadnezzar's king compared to the Persian Empire is not the Persian Nebuch Empire is not weaker militarily, no, but it's, it's stronger, right? And uh, in Greece and so forth, each one's stronger. So when the Bible says each one is lesser, you're left with what's that mean? Yeah, and you know, less or what morally? Question, I, I, that's, question argue, that's question. That's <laughs> question. The Babylonians were pretty bad. Yeah, right. You know? So, so I, I, you, you, you kind of left that. That one's kind of left to the interpreters to write like fifty pages Books. of nonsense. Books. Yeah. It yeah. Sounds like a you know, yeah, um, master's thesis coming up or something. No, that's but right. Yeah, I mean, I I couldn't quite get a handle on that. I mean, my Bible notes here talk about uh, lesser, you know, morally. I don't like that. From what I know of King Nebuchadnezzar, that's probably not quite right. Well, he was pretty bad. Okay. Well, again, and, you know, we we're talking about, we're all reading about what's going on in Israel and when the mosque came over the border and what they did to the women and the children. Uh, and read Jeremiah. Read the prophets that we went through last, you know, the small, minor prophets. Disemboweling of pregnant women. Dashing babies heads against the rocks. And this is something I talked about to these guys yesterday. I said, you know, all this happened in the past to 
Jerusalem to the Jews of mm -hmm. Jerusalem, and it was God's judgment on the Jews. But then God prophesied to Habakkuk that the same thing would happen to Babylon, which it did. They did as bad as the, the Israelites retreated, the Judaites retreated by Nebuchadnezzar, is as bad as Babylon was treated by the Medes and the Persians. They came in and sacked Babylon, the capital city, and killed the babies and killed the women, and it was it was very bad. And in Israel was no better. Right. They did the same so the same stuff. So that that you know. So I thought they say that they didn't do it. Well, I was talking about historically way uh -huh. back. Yeah, as far as the hospital is Katrina, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, well, well they're just... blaming each other. So, right. They're gonna continue to do that because no one wants to be responsible for that. But it's starting over here because at the UB and UB college to keep uh those uh the, the Jewish children. Jewish college students and the Palestinians are not getting along. Well, you can understand that. Yep. But some of them came from Israel. Some of them got relatives or they know people over there. Yes. There. So yep. can understand that. So hopefully none of them can happen. Well, anyways, I mean, to, no. to, to, no. you know, the next, as far as morality goes, the next guy is, is Cyrus the Great. That's the Persian Empire. Right. And Cyrus, old Cyrus there, he's, as far as I know, I mean, if you go back to Isaiah, he's the, the you know, God's anointed. Right. As far as I know, he's the only non-Jew that's anointed, by God to anointed do it. for anything. Right. And so it's to say that they've gone downhill, see, it just doesn't seem to fit. So right. I, I'm left with that question, I guess. I, I, I go along with the strength of the, of the armies and the strength, the actual strength of the... You know, I mean, Alexander the Great arguably was the greatest general who ever produced this side of heaven. If you yeah, but he didn't, yeah, but you, when you when you go to that, historically speaking, the Persians had a bigger, bigger army. army. It was but Alexander that, you know, he did, did more that. with what he had. Uh, but as far as saying like the army was weaker, not the case. Right. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I don't know. You're left with that. You are. <laughs> Um, now, we, we come to an interesting uh, portion here, and I, I want to do a, uh, let's talk about this, verses 46 to 49 as we complete chapter 2. Katrina, would you read? The king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face. Uh, I'm just worried I'm stuck on homage, paid homage, homage before Daniel and commanded that they should present an offering and incense to him. The king answered Daniel and said, Trust your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and revealer of secrets, since you could reveal the secret. Then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many get great gifts and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. Also Daniel patrons the king and he set uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Okay so I have a problem with this uh, when I read it. Um, he fell down and paid homage to Daniel. Now, we know from what we've read earlier, in the earlier interpretation, Daniel, Daniel always gave glory to God. And Daniel said, it wasn't me, King. It was the God I serve is the one who's doing all this. And here Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and burned incense for Daniel. And then he, then he, with his lips, though, he did honor God, the God of Daniel. Um, and you could tell, though, that Daniel was a, an instrument of what God told him and could tell him what the dream was. How does that, as we're living our lives today, how does that square with what happens in our lives when something good happens? Um, what What's our... When you're at work or you're doing something and it goes well um, and people start giving you credit for everything, what's the first thing we do? We take it. Take the credit. Right. 
Praise the glory. And what's what's God? What's the thing that God will never share with another? His glory. His glory. His glory. That's right. And God hates pride above all things. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I'm I'm kind of interested, or it's interesting that Daniel doesn't record um, what was said by him to the king when he said this to Daniel. Um, the Amplified, the interpreters or the translators of the Amplified put in there and paid homage to Daniel in brackets as a great prophet of the highest God. Okay. And again, that's their interpretation. It's not in the Hebrew or in this case, the Aramaic. It's not in the scripture that that is said, but this is their interpretation of why Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and paid homage to Daniel. Um, and again, I ordered that an offering and incense should be offered up to him in honor of his God. Again, in honor of his God in brackets. It doesn't say that in the scripture. Yeah. So I had a little bit of problem there, Daniel not writing down the fact that he said glory to God, that kind of thing. But in our lives, we have to remember when good things happen, when God blesses us, when God blesses the work of our hands, we need to give God glory. And that's just a basic thing we have to remember. Because if we don't, um, we're going to have problems. We will have problems. It just doesn't come naturally. Right? No. It really doesn't. No. No, we, we're human. And, right. and the, only, the only solace I have, Keith, when I, when I think about that, <clears throat> is the fact that God realizes that we're made of clay. He knows that we are human and we're fallible and we're human beings. Even though we're his children, he knows where we screw up. Um, and, but my, the only reason I even talk about this is um, that we have to be cognizant of the fact that um, if God blesses our work and blesses the fruit of our hands, fruit of our labor, that he gets the glory for what we do. That seems to be a sign of maturity as a portion of sanctification. Mm -hmm. The more we grow, the more we come to that realization. I agree. And the closer we come to the end of our lives, we also realize that even more. I was reading one interpreter. I actually there's a video that I watched that I was going to share with you, but I don't agree with everything the guy says, so I did not. But he said that this happened 23 years after the the prior prophecy. I think that's too far out. I don't think it happened. Well, maybe you don't know. No, we don't. Know. That's not. We don't know. But he, this guy, made it sound like it was absolutely it was 23 years later. Like get a calendar, yeah. and I'll talk to him. Or something. <laughs> um, so. Uh, we don't know how long after the initial uh, meeting of Daniel, where the dream, King Nebuchadnezzar's dream was interpreted. Uh, it, it's. The yeah, point's brought up by, I mean, commentators bring that same point up every other, you know, the apostles uh, immediately, you know, re refer to God and, and don't worship me, that kind of thing. He doesn't do that. Right. But, you know, what Keith said, I think that the process. As again, it's pretty far along the process. He's pretty well. He's locked into obviously as we read forward into the you know the uh, punishments that you know, doesn't care what the king does, right? And, and that may be part of it. You yeah. know, he doesn't care what the king does anymore. And his king is someone else, right? You know, it's, it's an right. Other, you know, his deity, his god is whatever Nebuchadnezzar wants to do with that. Huh? It's from in a furnace or whatever. Yeah, you know, you yeah. Don't really care. Yeah. You know, on the other hand, when you jump from four, verse forty-six to forty-seven, I don't know what your Bible does. Mine's kind of odd because it says you have forty-six to offer incense to him. Right. And then forty-seven starts out in my Bible. The king answered. Mm-hmm. How does that mean? Okay. And we left. Is there something left out that Daniel said? Right. The very thing you were expecting. Perhaps. It's possible. And the it's king possible. answers him and says, you know. Truly, your God is a God of all gods. Uh, it's almost like a um, a piece was left out. Okay, and, and see, I when I read that, and you, it's very possible you're right. Like I read that is um, he he didn't talk. He paid homage to Daniel uh, in verse forty six, verse forty five. Daniel finishes the interpretation of the dream. Right. Verse forty six, he pays homage to him, burns incense to him, and all that. And then finally he talks to Daniel and says, Daniel, of the truth, your God is a God of uh, That could be. Yeah, so you go either way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 
It just seems kind of odd. That's all. It does. Okay. Well, I mean, this this is supposedly a direct translation, so I think that's why it seems odd. And uh, you know, when I think of verse forty-nine, uh, before we move on to the next chapter, when I look at forty-nine, Daniel riding high. So what does Daniel do? With his own people in places of authority. In this case, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It has them appointed to uh, rulers over the affairs of the province of Babylon, which is the main province of the kingdom of Babylon. So, and again, that reminds me of Nehemiah. Nehemiah prays for four months, and fasting and praying for four months. If the king says, you look crestfallen, what's wrong? And Nehemiah goes into his diatribe about what's going on. The gates of Jerusalem are burned. My people are, you know, in trouble. They're starving, blah, blah, blah. So, and he had the whole plan. God gave him the whole plan and laid it all out for him when the time was right. So in this case, Daniel, everything went well. The dream was interpreted. And uh, so Daniel says, okay, in this point of strength, here's what we need to do. Now, that tells us, fast forward 2,700 years to us here, thereabouts. And as God opens doors for us and God helps us do things, we need to make sure that we take advantage of that as well to further the kingdom of God, to further, to do the right thing. Uh, if we have, uh, if we receive favor in the eyes of the Pharaoh or the president, or the congressman or the senator or wherever it might be. We need to pray as we're talking and have God help us to further things along a little bit. It's, you know, we take advantage of the situation. He was not, Daniel was no dummy. He took advantage of the situation and it worked. So he had, had some good guys in. Well, it kind of worked because when we go into the next chapter, he didn't do him any favors. Well, uh, Daniel, um, Daniel worked for his friends because Daniel asked for his friends, but he stood in the court. So, uh, you know, he didn't ask for a promotion for himself. Right. I don't know if that's humility or, you know, Don Corleone keeping enemies closer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. But there you go. For whatever reason, he stays at that in the king's court. And he stays in the king's court apparently the rest of his life. Except. In chapter three, he's not in the king's court. And Daniel in verse 27 and in verse like 40, end of 45, he does say no wise man and nobody can uh, explain to the king. He, he gives credit to God. I mean, he basically says only God can reveal what's going to happen. And then he also says the great God has shown the king what will take place. So it sounds like he is at least not taking, you know, not taking credit for it, saying, yeah, I'm so good. Look at me, you know. Right. So, right. Yeah. I, what were you saying, Scott? He's, where, he's not in the King's Court where? Oh, no, you're talking about what Becky was saying. Yeah, I got what Becky was saying but just before that. You said some of I'll that. say he didn't. By getting his friends into the King's Court or getting them appointed high administrators in Babylon, he didn't do them any favors because it was coming up. Well, that, that, that's kind of preordained. But yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But uh, I'm saying by, by getting them up and promoted, now they're in a place that people are, uh, <laughs> he's put a target on their back, if you will. Yeah, okay. That's the only thing I'm but saying. He, for some reason, stays in the court. Um, I mean, there's a, he doesn't even go back to Jerusalem, does he? No. He's well, stayed, he's, he's when too, they go back, he's, he's in his old. 90s. Yeah, so he's too old, but I mean, he just stays there. Well, and then he comes on to the next administration as well. Yeah, yeah. several. Yeah, Not many. He's a good guy. All right, so now we uh, now we are uh, so Nebuchadnezzar, being who Nebuchadnezzar is, decides he's going to do something special. We're in chapter three now, and we'll start reading. Um, Verse uh, chapter three, verse one. Oh, one only. Okay. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, six cubits high, six cubits wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. 
And if you look at that statue, the, the statue that uh, the statue that he set up was all gold. It was probably gold wood, a wood statue plated with gold because you have a to translate it into what we understand. The statue was 90 feet tall and it's nine feet wide. And some of that was the platform it was set on. Uh, it sounded some kind of a, a, a riser or platform, but it was all covered with gold. And it couldn't have been all gold because, number one, well, it's too much gold to try and make something that big. You typed all the, the treasure of the kingdom in this statue. He didn't want to do that, but he still made a statue of gold. Well, Sadako probably wanted to stand 90 feet tall without something bad happening. Yeah. Statue. <laughs> Gold's not that, not that strong. Yeah, right. yes. Agreed. <laughs> So, and then my note here is how soon he forgets. We're talking about, he's talking in, in the Friar chapter, his, his, his God is the God of gods, the King of kings. I mean, he's uh, the Lord of kings, revealer of secrets, uh, uh, so that this figure can be revealed. Now, we all of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar, a very short memory, he sets that image up to himself. Um, there is some time between chapter two and three. But still, to me, it's amazing how quickly Nebuchadnezzar forgets what he just said to Daniel. You know? He said it himself for himself. Oh, yeah, pride. He's a very proud man. And we see later where God breaks the pride. Uh, but this is uh, uh, chapter 3. We're, we're still in the very proud uh, Nebuchadnezzar. We're gonna, Mike, could you read verses 2 through 6? Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather the satraps and prefects and the governors, the counselors and treasurers, justices and magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, prefects, governors, counselors, treasurers, justices, magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood the image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up is a lot of repetitive. Yes, in this chapter. yeah, it's like he, but I thought he must be trying to do a paragraph. He says, Okay, I want this told in 500 words, so he had to fill it up somehow. Yeah, yeah it's, <laughs> it's supposedly a literary uh, tactic, but okay. I, I don't get it. And then, a uh, hero proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe. And every kind of, I didn't know there was any Scottish people there. Every kind of music. Uh, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Here we go. And, and Nebuchadnezzar gives plain instructions. Here's what you're supposed to do. This is the way it works. Okay. When all these things play, and okay, now let me explain these instruments. Now, in the King James, going back to John Gill, there's a coronet or a horn, which is made sort of trumpet. Um, the Jews had ram's horns trumpets, but it's some kind of a trumpet. They had a flute or a pipe or a whistle because it made a hissing noise. Used, it is used with a shepherd's pipe or whistle uh, in Zechariah 10. A harp, an instrument of music used by David and much in use among the Jews and other nations. A sackbut, now this is, a, or sambuca. According to Athenaeus, was a four-stringed instrument, an invention of the Syrians. And Strapo, a Greek writer, speaks of it as a barbarous name and as the Eastern ones were reckoned by the Grecians. <clears throat> now, the psaltery, another instrument, again, in the King James, a Greek word, um, it's rendered dulcimer or bagpipe. Now, dulcimer is totally different than a bagpipe. Dulcimer is an instrument it's plucked, and there's, um, if any of you remember, um, oh, famous, famous Christian uh, writer and songwriter from the 90s, he died tragically. Um, our God is an awesome God. He wrote for Amy Grant. Mm. Um, anyway, he played the hammer dulcimer, and it's, a, it's an instrument that you play. Um, so, they translated bagpipe or dulcimer, uh, dulcimer or bagpipe in the in the um, amplified. <clears throat> so it could be 
they're not sure, but they're, this is kind of what they're talking about. Um, now, Servius, 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 sorry, calls an oblique pipe, and Isidore described as the hollow piece of wood with leather stretch upon it and beat upon with rods or sticks, something like a drum. And then at the, at the end, they talk about all kinds of music that could have been thought of that was done in honor to this idol and to allure cardinal sensual persons to the worship of it according to the order given. So this was not some kind of a, when this came out uh, and they played these instruments, this was not a just a blurring of all the instruments. It was evidently some kind of a, uh, a musical piece that they came up with that all these instruments would play. And uh, according to the commentators I've read, their thought is that this was done uh, to entice people that were carnal, that just that in order for them give them some kind of an emotional uh, tie to this idol, make them fall down and worship. And that's the the thought process of, of, the, of many commentators on that. So the, the enticement was okay. You've got the fire and furnace as an enticement. That's a pretty good enticement. Okay, you don't fall down. You're going to the fiery furnace is going to take care of you. But in order to give the the you got the hammer. That was it. The, the carrot and the stick. The stick is the fiery furnace. The carrot is this music is going to play, and when this music plays. You're going to really feel like bowing down to this thing. It'd be pretty loud, huh? Must have been. Because you're on the other side of town. Yeah. This thing's put up out in a plane outside the uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> city. Need some running. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, look, verse 7. Angel, if you read that for me, please. <clears throat> Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, blare, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshiped the golden image with King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Okay, and something that I we have to remember as believers in Christ, we are not deceived. We see what the what the program is. Now, again, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were worshipers of the true God. They were given foresight and insight for the fact that this is wrong. But people that uh, are not are deceived are pagans. They're 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 looking at something, and to them, it's okay. Okay, the king says we should do it. So. It's okay that we will bow down and worship this thing. Yeah. Um, and my point is this. We are, as, as Christians, we have to remember when we're talking to people that don't know Christ, that they are deceived. They really believe what they're talking about. They're, they have, uh, we talk about when Jesus uh, was healing a blind man, in one case, it talks about the scales falling from his eyes. So, Again, the spiritual scales have fallen from our eyes, but people out there on the street who don't know God, they still have the scales in place. At the same time, the Bible says that they see the stuff that we talk about under <clears throat> foolishness. Right. right. To that, to which you're perishing. To right. them which you're perishing. The things of God are foolishness to them which you're perishing. That's exactly right, Keith. So that's and the reason I'm just making a point of this is as we're talking to non-believing, not believers, people that don't believe in God, that um, have a humanistic point of view. They may not be worshiping Baal today, but they sure are doing all the rites and rituals that people did before Baal. And they're worshiping mostly themselves today, or the almighty dollar or work or whatever, whatever idol they've set up for themselves. I know I've been talking to my um, friend. Um, She's Catholic and everything. And, um, we was having a discussion about the Bible, and I keep telling her, I say, you got to read the Bible for yourself. But she always saying that she she don't understand it. She keeps saying she don't understand it. So, and um, so we are. So I say, well, what? Just open it up and ask God to help you to understand it. 
but I don't think that she really just don't want to read it. That's a Catholic thing too. Mm -hmm. uh, Katrina, where you know, hundreds of years ago, people couldn't read, so mm -hmm. they trusted the priest to interpret. Mm -hmm. And then they could read, and the Bible was there. They were told that it weren't smart enough to understand it, so mm -hmm. we'll interpret it for you. Mm -hmm. And so some of that still carries forward. And they think about that all the good stuff they did and you know stuff like that and i'd be like that's not that's not the way it is. it's a works it's a works <laughs> like mike said earlier catholicism is a works-based religion um it's okay we believe in jesus but we have to do this other stuff too that's christ isn't enough to them uh, you start going down a little so they go to mary and then we go to Get Joseph, don't forget Joseph. Oh, yes, Joseph. I mean, <laughs> all the other saints and everything. And purgatory was once within that. Yeah, and of course, that all, everybody was mysteriously released from purgatory. I maintain we're talking about this the other day with someone <clears throat> that purgatory was just a way for the Catholic Church to get money because don't forget, they had indulgences back in the day, and you, you bought this papal uh indulgence uh the, the, your father has gotten up your father out of purgatory your mother or, um here's your get out of jail free card basically it's like playing monopoly it was still burning candles in the Catholic church of recent and doing mass right. pay for mass yes yes that's right yeah. Yeah. so they the indulgence because it's not quite as blatant i guess as it used to be um if, and has anyone here seen the movie luther yes we, we did it in a bible study here once the movie Luther is, is worth watching if you've never watched it. But it shows coming to now we're back in the Middle Ages, you know, close to the Middle Ages, 1500s. You have this cart, this really ornate cart coming to town, and they, 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 there's a priest up there. Come and you know, pay your money, get these indulgences, release your release your loved ones from hell, and get them out of purgatory. You know, I mean, it was to someone who's simple who couldn't read. It was enticing. Oh, if I give you money, I get my my mother out of hell or or and out of purgatory and we get her close to heaven quicker. Mm. Uh, yes. I never seen that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's the baby issue you were talking about earlier went to limbo. Right. Right. Exactly. In, in the Catholic faith. Yes. Yep. What about the non-Catholic version of the televangelist that indicated if you send me a set number of dollars? You're going, to, yeah, I'm going to send you the magic water and you rub this on. Uh, and the prayer like, cloth that we prayed over on the altar. There's no different. No different. No different whatsoever. It's terrible. It's still occurring. It, it is. And, it's, and that, sadly, to your point, Keith, it's occurring in the Protestant church today. That's what I mean. Not yep. Catholic. It's, yep. it's occurring. It's not, error is not limited to Catholicism, I guess, no. is the way I want to say it. Television was a big help to those guys, huh? Oh, boy. And radio, too, back in the day. Oh. Uh, and <laughs> McGee talks about, and McGee died in 1988. He stopped recording in the mid 70s. Take care, Katrina. Um, he stopped recording in the mid 70s. But um, like Jay Vernon McGee talks about all the other radio pastors at that time that were out there being charlatans, you know, uh, that were teaching error. And they were getting a lot of money, a lot more than he was getting, you know. McGee and McGee's famously, and uh, again, I, I don't agree with 100% with how McGee interprets the Bible, but he does his best. Um, he, his instructions before he died to the radio ministry were play the tapes until the money runs out. <laughs> that was his exact instructions. And of course, they're in more countries now, and it's an ongoing ministry. They're moving out. Okay. They're supposed, everybody fell down to worship, but there's an exception. Verses 8 through 12, I'm going to read. Therefore, at that time, certain men of Chaldean descent came near and mm -hmm. brought malicious accusations against the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever, buttering up the king. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, dulcimer, or bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews who we have appointed and set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. 
they do not serve your gods or worship the golden image you have set up. And again, when we read this, um, I'm reminded of, remember in school there's always a tattletale? And that, that's what these are, these are, these are, there's a lot of jealousy involved, yeah. these three guys. They're foreigners. They're in charge of the main province of Babylon. So there's jealousy involved um, so that these people were against them and, and showed it by going to the king and saying, look what these guys have done. And we're close to seven o'clock before it we'll, we'll we'll put ourselves in the fiery furnace next time. Yeah, I was gonna say where's Daniel? Yeah, like it's Daniel's person. yeah, where's that's Daniel? right. He's not in the group. He's not in the group. He's all they all the commentators say probably off on a mission to the king or something. Or it could be that the people that are making the accusations are afraid to accuse him. That's very right. he's uh well too close to the king, so we're gonna leave him out of it, but these other guys. We're going to take care of them and take them out. We're going to take them out, right? Hmm. So he's not there. So next time we're going to uh, we're going to uh, get into Nebuchadnezzar's response to this thing that, that they've done against his pride, against the statue that he set up. The statue is of we don't know. But okay. the, the commentators <laughs> want to say that they think it's Nebuchadnezzar. Nobody knows. Yeah, I, I, it could have been the god Baal, Baal, or some other god that Nebuchadnezzar. I, I think it's we're not supposed to know because it, it's not part of the story. The story is it's an idol, right? And to the end, so to make it Nebuchadnezzar kind of takes away from the point. It's interesting. That we talk about the Jews being God's people and all that. Well, and uh, was it Josiah's day or Habakkuk's day that they brought out the serpent that Moses had crafted in the wilderness? There's a serpent. If you remember the story in Exodus, um, that God sent snakes among the people. And they had done for the 90th time, they'd screwed up. And God sent snakes out to kill the people. And God said, okay, and Moses went to God and said, okay, form a bronze snake, set it up. And it comes to pass, when anybody's bitten by a snake, all they got to is look at this bronze snake, and they'll, they'll be healed. That will heal them. Again, it was a faith thing. It was the decree went out, you be bitten by the snake, you look at the bronze serpent, and you'll be healed. Well, in Habakkuk's day, they started worshiping the bronze serpent. They had that as an idol. I mean... So that we don't have the bronze serpent today. He broke it to pieces and melted it, got rid of it because it was a an object of worship in the Jews. So I guess it goes to prove we'll worship anything. You know, it's, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. All right. Um, I hope you got as much out of this as I did, and then we'll get more out of it next time. And there's there's a lot here. Um, mm -hmm. Daniel is a fascinating book. Uh, I love studying it. Uh, and I see, I've always been in the, pro if you look on the thing I'm going to send out, when I send out the notes, I'll send this along. There's a picture that was generated, if you look at oh, your email. Yeah, I saw that. Did you see email, that? Yeah. Yeah. This is a picture generated by uh, Dally, D-A-L-L-E, -L -L -E, number three. It's, it's in the email I'm going to send you. It was in the, in the email I sent yesterday. It's a picture of the fiery furnace. He gave um, us a challenge to read the end of this, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe somebody would actually go to the end and look at it, right? But you did, so thank you. Yes. So again, um, we don't know what a fire refers. We don't know what the idol looked like. I mean, there's pictures. I can generate. There's pictures in there of the idol. Is um, that particular fire refers made of metal? Does it, I, it like? It kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Given what the Bible says, it would have melted. Yeah. So, yeah. Probably not made of metal. Probably not. Uh, probably stone or something, brick. Right? Usually, yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Oh, yes. and again, I challenge you, like I said in the email I sent out, I challenge all of you, learn as much as you can about this AI. It's important. It's a new technology. It's like the internet was 20 years ago. Good or evil. And you got exactly right. It, it can be. So we have to have our discernment meter turned up all the way when we're seeing this stuff. Again, I talked about a couple of weeks ago the when we started the book of Daniel that the artificial intelligence is well, the book was written in the time of the Medes, uh, the 
later, a later writing. That's what they said. Again, Antiochus the Fourth. Yeah, that's the time. Yeah, so that's a that that. Been that's around for a long time, right? That, that thesis right. has been around. But this this placed it like it was a fact. It wasn't a well? There's a, there's a, some people think that it was written. No, it was written that. So whenever we read these things generated by artificial intelligence, we ask questions of Siri or uh, Google or uh, any of them. We need to have our discernment meter up. Um, Google is going to in, in, in incorporate artificial intelligence into its home assistance if you have a if we have on our kitchen table the google home thing with the pictures going out all the time you can ask questions on google they're going to incorporate artificial intelligence into it. But what they have now is a very uh, low grade artificial intelligence book but they're going to up, up the ante so again we need to be we're talking about scripture and spiritual things we need to read everything and listen to everything with discernment. I'm going to rely on you to ensure that the AI is informed. I'm trying. I don't think I can handle it. You could. You're, you're more intelligent than I am. Too much. But it takes, it takes time. Well, yeah. I need to know when we see the robot sitting next to us that we're like humans. It's coming. It How is. are you going to know the difference? Well, we might have, <laughs> we would still, we all still have, they may have more flesh, we may not know. Has anyone, re any, did anyone see the series well, Battlestar Galactica, the new one? The new Battlestar Galactica? No, I never did that. Anybody, anybody up there see get well, Battlestar Galactica? Not the 1978 one. I'm Sorry, I'm a Lauren Green man. <laughs> <laughs> well, the new one, in the new one, the Cylons have put flesh on the robots. And you can't tell the difference unless even down to their blood type. So they all look like Arnold Schwarzenegger now? No, there's oh. only eight, eight models of them. So there might be 20 people that look like me. But they had different robots that only eight <laughs> models, but they were alive, quote unquote, oh, alive. Yeah. You know, and walking and talking. There is a new robot, we're past time. Uh, there's a new robot out there now that you can look at on the internet that uses artificial intelligence and talks. It can't walk yet. But it stands there it's, as a woman's features and a woman's voice. He moves hands and arms. Can't well, walk though. It will. Oh, it's I got locked out. The only thing I do, I, I go on Facebook and look at Alan's pictures, right? That's as far as I get into Facebook. Yep. And uh, Facebook locked me out, wants a password. Oh, okay. And I said, okay. So I don't have to do that anymore because I'm locked out. I don't see your pictures anymore, Al. Kind of bummed you, about that. Well, you're the lucky one. <laughs> All right. Mike, would you pray for us today as we go out? I just pray for everybody here, the traveling mercies, and pray for everybody that's been ill this week, that everybody recovers. Just thank you for Scott and all his hard work and uh, preparing for us a uh, 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 method of understanding your word better. Hopefully, applying it to our own lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If not, please click the link in the upper right-hand corner to view our message, the most important video you will ever watch. Join us for worship Sunday mornings at 10:30 a.m either in person at 2595 Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore, New York, or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash KNOXEPC. Find past sermons on our website knoxepc.com forward slash sermons. Stay up to date with Knox Church. To receive our monthly newsletter, email office at knoxepc.com. If you need prayer, send an email to pastor at knoxepc.com. You can request text alerts by texting 734-968-1847. Knox Sunday School happens every Sunday at 9 a.m. for kids grades kindergarten through 8th, and for adults of all ages. Email office at knoxepc.com for more information. Knox Evangelical Presbyterian Church. Our motto is truthful teaching, and graceful living. 
we are committed to growing in the knowledge of Jesus, serving Him by serving others, and loving the body of Christ. To donate to Knox Church via PayPal, visit knoxepc.com and click on Giving at the top of the page, or scan the QR code above with your smartphone or tablet. Special thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the members of Knox Church. Without them, this outreach wouldn't be possible.